I'm Rob LeCoury, a senior editor at Gold Derby. I'm here with Wes Bentley, who portrays Jamie Dutton on Paramount Network's blockbuster west of yellowstone um where's so you know we've seen the first half of season five and frankly i'm a little stressed out about jamie's survival i'm just not sure i'm feeling a little bit yeah perplexed and worried and i just need you to tell me that everything's going to be okay and jamie's going to get through the next half of season five because we're all very worried about him i can't tell you anything because i don't know myself and you know to be honest even if i did i don't know if i would say because the it's so much fun seeing the reaction and it's all come from it being unexpected so you know i'm ha- I'm having a lot of joy in that but i really don't know it's going to be fascinating for me to find out too and i you know he's putting the time in it to make it quality like it's always been and it just seems to be getting better and better and so i believe in what taylor's doing and i and i'm as i'm a, i'm waiting on pins and needles like everybody else yeah we just wanted to to just get through this next half <laughs> in one Definitely. piece and then we'll be all I right agree. because many of us love this character um you know to be honest I mean I love Beth and I love Rick and all of them but Jamie's always, I've always had a soft spot for him and I'm just wondering then actors often tell me that to portray a character authentically you know you've got to care about them or understand them or even love them what are your thoughts on that line of thinking particularly about you know for playing this character for so long well, I, I think that's an interesting way to approach it. I I, I don't know if I pro- if this is different, but my first rule with the character, and I, I'm not sure where I learned it or read it or whatever, but it, it stuck with me was not to judge my character at all, to 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 be to be as stoic as I could be as Wes about my feelings. It's challenging doing it for so long, you know, and so many big, 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 big things he did that you could judge. But I really tried to stick with that feeling of not having a soft spot for him or a hate for him or anything like that. Just let because people are don't really do that with themselves a whole lot, you know. But it, if they do, it's from a different way than I would put it on someone else. So I let Jamie do that to himself. And I I, I let Jamie, you know, he's going for it, whatever he's wanting. He he has a genuine desire for it. So I've got to play his not a caricature version of it, but a real genuine does his genuine desire is more interesting. So yeah. I've been trying to focus on that and uh, um, and bring that, but it's challenging. He's a challenging guy to do that with. <laughs> I can imagine. And, and the beauty of it is, like, you've got, you know, Taylor Sheridan's writing, the whole team who make the show. And it's, to me, like, to be playing, playing a character with so much depth and um, nuance is is probably a real dream. Well, how, how have you felt about playing this character over the last few seasons and his trajectory? Because that's a lot of stuff that you get to play with and a lot of actors probably would dream to have a role it is, yeah, I, it, yeah, it was my dream too to have a role like this. It feels like multiple roles and one. It's what I, I always was interested in complex characters and actors who could do those complicated characters and, and uh, morally ambiguous characters well, because that's that's really interesting. So I want I want I wanted to give that. So I, uh, but his writing is there, and I and I'm trying to match it and bring that to the table as well. And and it's been a dream. It's also been the biggest challenge because it's challenged to do all of that and over a long period of time, but um, not as much so when you have a writer like Taylor, he really is like something I have to match. I sit with his work for as long as I can. I run it as many times as I can alone in my cabin in the woods in Montana and, and try to like find, find all these, you know, these little treasures he's hidden in all in every line. Cause every line means something. That's the kind of writing he has is there's nothing wasted. It's all, a point there's a point to it and so I, I digging into that is much like I remember digging into plays as a young kid you know finding what they intended and the subtext through it yeah um I'm thinking back to like almost 25 years ago when you were Ricky in American Beauty and then um much later on you know my favorite role that you've played in the past is probably Doyle and Stella and probably because I'm biased I love that movie so much but yeah, I just think about this through line about your work and how with many of your performances, you play this quietly intense character, often damaged, but you've got this really beautifully compelling vulnerability. There's something about the way that you perform many of these characters that I find super compelling. I'm just wondering, is that something that occurs to you about you as a person or as an actor that you do sometimes give that a vulnerability off that is kind of interesting? You try to make that interesting? Yeah, I think, you know, job one, one of you know one of the most important jobs here is to be emotionally available to give it to the performance because that's what people are watching is 
not what not always what's going on but how are the people going through it what are they what are they going through and so having that emotional vulner availability means you're vulnerable to to it and so i i that alone starts it off but jamie's on top of that such a going through so much that i have to reveal and that i've really had to um be brave and be as vulnerable as i could and, and be brave to experience these things without being afraid of it and and hiding from it because you'll see that in the performance and i didn't want that i thought it was too good for me to waste that so it was the first time in my career where where i read scenes where i needed to cry where i wasn't like well it'll only happen if it happens <laughs> i really i had to get there and so i found i found things i could do that i never thought i could do you know i was really surprised myself through this guy and through these challenges that Taylor gives me and welcome challenges Taylor gives me uh, um, the abilities that I didn't know I had and a, and a bravery in my acting that I didn't give, I didn't give to enough stuff in my younger career, which I knew was happening, but yeah. I also knew time was the only thing that could break that. Yeah. So much of us. Happens, <laughs> yeah. So much of happens to us as we get older, obviously. Um, and yeah, I find that really actually quite comforting. Um, so the scene <laughs> opens, if you think back, to the beginning of season five and you were in production on this quite some time ago but if you think back like um john dutton's endorses governor jamie is usurped um already from the get-go um you, you have to do a lot of work where jamie is on the back foot but you know he says yes ma'am and beth says good boy and all that stuff but i kept screaming at the tv in my mind this is not sustainable because jamie is going to have to push back punch back he's a smart guy and so i was wondering what conversations were you having with Taylor? And, and then how excited were you about the prospect of Jamie actually finally pushing back a little bit on Beth, you know, the specter in his life? Well, I, I didn't have any conversations with Taylor because my I find we we have we have talks about many things, but I never ask him what's coming. He sort of really? he has sort of suggests things in moments, but I never I never let him stay because I I've learned uh in TV that you don't, you know, you don't listen to that. You wait to see the pages and and so, because I don't want to decide anything for my character too early, right? You know, so I, I I find the joy in waiting for the pages to come, and then discovering all these things in, in that way. Um, um, and sorry, the second question. I'm sorry. I, I, well, was it was that? more just like we. I mean, if you didn't really know it was happening, you didn't know that Jamie was going to start pushing back. So you couldn't have been excited. You're just excited well, about like, whatever Taylor gives you. You're just happy to do it. And yeah, right. The pushing back was fantastic because I actually was, you know. I was I wasn't going to call or say anything, but I was stewing in my room. Oh my God, he's still when just upon the first reads of those first few episodes, I felt like he's still so weak. What's he gonna do? He's got to do something. He killed his own dad. What? Yeah. What's he gonna do? But that was I was still being Jamie and realizing that he's stuck. She's made a play on him. He really doesn't know what to do with, and he's he's had to work through all that campaign during that campaign. Work through killing his own father and all the terrible guilt and and all the terrible feelings about that the fear and the guilt and the anger he must feel now about her but you know it's funny because people are saying well if he knew about the that sh the, the that photo didn't matter then why was he afraid of it at first well this is why because he he thought she knew about it so he was wondering what is this play she's doing where she's got this photo of me with him like she knows about that we can't reveal that place so and and, and him like and so I think he spent the first half of it lost and feeling like Beth's got him stumped for the first time ever. Intellectually, he doesn't know what to do. And then enter Sarah Atwood and it starts to focus his energy into what it is and what's coming for him and what he needs to do first. Because he's he's really accepting his own death here in the first few episodes. He's accepting his fate and that he's never going to be what they said he was going to be. And then here comes this person who might might give him the chance to get it at least for a moment before he's killed. <laughs> That's interesting that you say that. I was curious about your perspective um, about that storyline with um, Sarah played so beautifully by Dawn or Gary. Um, so, yeah, she's you know, they get to do, those two characters obviously, you know, form this connection. But I, I was always thinking, no, Jamie, no, no, stay away from her. She's playing you. And I'm like, you know, obviously, this is my getting into the, the story because I care about the character so you know but he confides in her and then she gives him this lifeline to maybe really punch back and I'm just wondering when you're playing that and you're playing opposite um Dawn is that what you think ultimately drives this character that she's a way forward or do you think he actually has feelings for this character and where does that where do you think that goes in the you know the next half of the season 
I think it's both. And Don and I, Don, Don is an incredible actor who is, she brings unexpected moments in every take. She brings power and focus. And she's kind of like, as an actor, was in a way doing what the character's doing. It was helping me focus Jamie's energy into something different this season. And and so, and also we we talked about like, there are people like this. They're both attracted to each other, really like, really find they're finding something that they both wouldn't have expected that is a true attraction of, of real substance that also is a relationship that's transactional and there are people like that that, that, that this happens they're power couples sometimes this is what happens it's both a real attraction and it's useful so i think she's uh, clearly using him i think jamie's been used a long time and he knows what that's like he knows he's being used it's smart by them probably thought it was coming in some way or another at some point but didn't expect to be as attracted to the person who was doing it. And also seeing in her, maybe this is where I'm supposed to be. Someone like this, she's a real like inspiration to, to, to what I, to use the tools I've been given. Like, I want to do this. So he's like, he's tapping into whatever she's providing him. And yeah. it's really focusing all that crazy, stupid energy. Jamie always wastes onto a real effective plot. Yeah, no, that's so true. Um, and I think Taylor and the, the writers, he's he's set it up beautifully because I mean, episode three, we already start to see Jamie really go into lawyer mode, which I love seeing you do that. Um, he bounds into the office as Emmy's lawyers are smugly sitting there and he kind of eviscerates them. He goes into bat for Beth, you know, and gets her off that charge. And, and so that's when Jamie's at his most virile or, you know, he's, he's strong and um, imposing. Is that a really interesting and fun part of, Oh, when you yeah. had to portray this character. Yeah, and I, I get thrilled on those days because I the weakness in Jamie is it's draining to play. You know, it's like and I love to play it because it's interesting, but it is, man, it takes me days, sometimes a week after a scene of one of those types to get to to shake myself out of it. And um, so I get really invigorated on the days where he's being super lawyer, where like he's tearing people apart in a really kind of wow. smarmy, clever, condescending way. He gets his power from those moments and that's it. In that room, that's all he's got. And that, so he takes that moment to just feel good about himself and, you know, puff that chest out, you know, watch them squirm and feel stupid for a minute, <laughs> gives him some sense of power. In, in the end, it's empty. It's not the man he wants to be. And, you know, in the end, it's leading to a dead end. So it's increasingly frustrating. I think that in the scene where he gets her out of the jail, he hates it. He hates that one. He's using it and he's getting a kick out of it in the moment to get that girl, you know, you're not from Montana girl thing moment over, but he hates he's getting her off the hook. She should pay for this. This she was wrong. Like, and 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 he's getting used again. And so as soon as he's done with her, you see him just drop like, oh God, this is sickening. Like just, you know, this is all I'm gonna be for forever is getting, you know, the fixer or whatever, you know. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. And then but you get to do some really fun stuff in 504 where in the you know the car fight and Beth screams at the end of, which he discovers he's had a son. Uh that you fist fight, you get to like, I don't know how much stunt work was involved in, in the car itself, but you get to really lose it. And I always love watching actors do that after a while of this pent-up aggression or frustration because you just get to let go. And I just wonder what's it like on set and how many times you have to do it and if you can sit back. <laughs> It's, it's, it's intense on set. It's intense because, um, but um, because we were really trying to just bring in all these emotions, right? The, I'm, you know, pounding my chest and like working myself up into these moments. Kelly's doing the same in her, in her way and bringing the pain of that moment is really hard and letting loose on me on that car. It's all worked out. It's like, yeah, you know, go hit me, hit me, hit me, hit me. And she does because she trusts me and I trust her. And we're, we're, we want to give it for the scene and it doesn't hurt really in that moment. And I mean, she's got a good punch, but <laughs> it's yeah. not really, it's not, I'm more interested in that moment being real. And she's great at not making it hurt anyway, you know, the technical side of it, she's amazing at it, but at the same time, amazing at making it look so devastating. And for Jamie, that moment of her threatening his son is I, that, that screaming, that yell is coming from the moment he's, he's realizing that, he's dead and now he's he's got to save that kid is to but that means i'm done she's just killed me and and so he think he's like the roar is the letting loose of any hope of that ever changing anything between them it's over anything between the duns it's over 
and that's that that's that release right there and then yeah. he almost killed it <laughs> yeah and then by the end of um first half of the season it's possible that you know they're both they're, both sides are going to put out hits on each other and get me the popcorn um so uh that's exciting um that's what we watched it for and it just reminds me as well you, jamie by necessity you don't get to spend a lot of or have a lot of scenes with the entire cast like some of the others do because jamie's an out an outsider but you do get to have uh, awesome scenes with Ke- kelly riley is there um she yes. is so wonderful and the two of you together are incredible as well what do you most value about working alongside her when you when those two characters are unfortunately in a room together it is both terrifying in the sense that um jamie has to go through so much and i want to i want to be there but it's also super easy because kelly what she's bringing is is driving that she is 110 percent in there and 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 simmering with emotions and trembling with rage and trembling with power and all those scenes and it's amazing to watch and be a part of and I'm and I'm and I'm, I'm there with her as we meet eyes there it, you just get lucky you know in these I don't know if it's lucky or Taylor just knew what he was doing to put us together but the 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 chemistry that both is there because of the, what's on the page and because of what we bring is just so it's just all so harmonizing so well and causing such amazing feelings from people but it's also us like seeing her doing that scene about when she turns to me and says about killing i'm going to kill that whatever the kid whatever i can't remember the lines because i was looking in her eyes i'd never seen all the things happening in her yet she was still surprising me with this all these things coming out of beth and out of kelly and i was i was just like it moved me so much i was almost slipped out of jamie which is rare <laughs> to in a moment because it was like she was so powerful and I just ran back to her and like I said, I didn't want to take us out of the moment, but I just put my arms around her for a minute and said, wow, wow. And then I walked away because I want to shake us out of it. But it was that it, you get a lot of that with her. So I'm lucky wow. like that. You know, I've got a lot of actors are like that on the show. It's, it's but Kelly's, uh, you know, it's great. To, it's been great to be a part of as a viewer, as much as it has been as, as an actor with her. Yeah, <clears throat> I can imagine. Because when when a scene's about to start with the two of them, you know, that's when the audience sits up and we're like, okay, give it to us. What's <laughs> going to happen now? Um, it's exciting yeah. why we watch the show. Like the, I hear from everyone that I know, and even in this line of work, that people love this show. It's always been so popular. It's pretty much the number one show in the world. And finally... Uh, thank God, the uh, awards group started to pay attention last year, which is really cool for Gold Derby, especially because then I get to have my favorite show and talk about it. Awards, you get nominated at the SAG Awards for Ensemble. Um, didn't win, but doesn't matter because the show's represented. How did it feel to to have that kind of recognition? And now it's still going. I have, I have multiple feelings awards, and I've been lucky enough to be a part of uh, uh, you know American Beauty. We won a lot of awards, so I experienced early what that was like, and. Um, it is fulfilling in a sense, you know, you, you get a, you get fulfilled by a group of people have said that they, they really enjoyed what your work so much that they, that they want to give you an award for that. That's, but it also, I feel like we've been re- rewarded so much by the audience who have, you know, despite all that, um, um, not being nominated and not the show, not getting that attention, they have are just only grown and grown and grown. And to me, that that's an award because, that means people are, are latched into it. What our work is attracting them. They're wanting to experience what we're giving them. Isn't that the point? It's like awards are great. They're the cherry on top. And we're certainly appreciated when given. But the truth is, it's the the people who talk to me about American Beauty years later, they don't remember whether it won awards or not. They they assume I won an award. I didn't. <laughs> you know, they they that's a, they, in that sense, it's just like, well, they they've been moved so much by that that's how they feel about it. That's powerful too. So I feel multiple ways. I think the show does, especially the crew's work and some of the actors and I some all the actors, I should say, I shouldn't limit anybody. I, I, I yeah. truly believe such great performances all around. I just mean to say um, oh, it'd be great if they got it. It's also, I know that that they deserve it even if they didn't. And in the sense that we've, we've won, we've won with the audience. They really love what we're doing. And that's the real thing we're after. Yeah. That's actually the best attitude to have. And um I have no control of the other. <laughs> you know, yeah, exactly. You know, anyway. like you're on such a huge show, and you know, you're just so well known. And um, and I think, and and to have so many millions of people just loving what you do, that's yeah. The thing. Um, yeah, it doesn't feel gimmick either. It doesn't feel like we're we're only getting attention because the show is flashy or something. It's actually there's 
they want to have therapy sessions with me about Jamie. So there's depth there. And that's that's a reward, I think. Yeah. And by the way, uh, for anyone who can't remember, you were nominated for a BAFTA for American Beauty, yeah. not at the Oscars, but they, met, they played the most beautiful clip of, of Ricky talking during the introduction of the movie during that Oscars. I don't know why I remember this stuff, but it's all in there. Um, so, you know, I just want to a lot of people assume that, you know, Ricky was the role that brought you um the, your first oscar nomination but that is still yet to come hopefully where's that will come very soon in these oscars <laughs> and other stuff. um good luck with the latter season uh half of season five we're all kind of waiting now like this so hurry up and get on with it um, yeah me too. Me too, i'm ready you're ready man oh i'm looking forward to it and thank you for your time today thank you for your time today as well thanks for having me